The island of Java is the most populated island in the world. It is a part of the country of Indonesia, which is an archipelago nation made up of thousands of islands. Yet surprisingly, 60% of Indonesia's entire population lives on this single island, which is only around 7% of the country's total land area. Java has a huge population of 151.6 million people. To put that into perspective, the entire country of Russia, which covers a massive 17.1 million square kilometers, only has a population of around 145 million people. As a result, with 1,170 people being found per square kilometer on the island, it has one of the highest population densities of any region in the world. But what is it that actually makes Java so densely populated? In today's video, we will look at the variety of factors that have led to this population distribution. First of all, it's important to understand and grasp the geography and size of Java. You see, Java isn't even the largest island in Indonesia. In fact, it's only the fifth largest island in Indonesia, with a modest area of 138,000 square kilometers. However, it is by far the most populous, with over 150 million people living there. Java's population has been growing steadily over the years. According to the World Bank, the island's population increased from 105 million in 2000 to 144 million in 2020, making it the world's most populous island. Historically, Java has been inhabited by humans for thousands of years, with evidence of human settlements dating back to the Bronze Age. This has led the island to play a key role in Indonesia's history, serving as the center of power for the ancient kingdoms of Mataram and Majapahit. The island has also been an important hub of trade and commerce for centuries, attracting people from different parts of the world to settle there. The island's location at the crossroads of major trade routes between Asia, Europe, and the Middle East, right next to the Malacca Strait, made it a strategic location for trade and commerce. During the colonial era when Java was under Dutch rule from the early 17th century until the mid-20th century, the Dutch brought with them new technologies and introduced new crops to the island, which led to increased agricultural productivity, which in turn helped to feed and sustain a growing population and contribute to economic growth. The Dutch also established a centralized administration on the island, which helped to establish a sense of order and stability. This, combined with the introduction of new technologies and crops, helped to attract more people to the island, leading to growth in its population. All this agricultural activity could be sustained due to the extremely fertile soil that the island possesses. You see, the island of Java is part of the Great Pacific Ring of Fire, which contains the majority of the world's active volcanoes. These volcanoes spew nutrient-rich ash and lava onto the surface that contribute to increased soil fertility. The island's volcanic soil is rich in nutrients, making it ideal for growing crops such as rice, corn, and vegetables. This has made Java one of the largest rice producers in the world, with rice fields covering much of the island's landscape. Java's agricultural industry has been a crucial source of income and employment for millions of people on the island. It has also played an important role in feeding the country's growing population. Today, Java's economy and infrastructure is a major reason why so many people choose to live here. The island is home to several of Indonesia's largest cities, including Jakarta, Surabaya, and Bandung. These cities have become important centers for commerce, manufacturing, and industry, attracting businesses and workers from all over the country. The island has a network of roads, railways, and airports that connect its cities and towns. This has made it easier for people to travel and for goods to be transported, facilitating economic growth and development. Moreover, the island's infrastructure has helped to attract investors and businesses, creating job opportunities and driving economic growth. In fact, Java accounts for around 60% of Indonesia's GDP and is the center of the country's financial and commercial activities. According to the World Bank, Java's gross domestic product, GDP per capita, increased from 2,693 US dollars in 2000 to 7,828 US dollars in 2019, reflecting the island's strong economic performance. The population growth can also be attributed to high birth rates and improved health care. According to the United Nations, Indonesia's fertility rate was 2.3 children per women in 2020, which is quite high for a country facing population pressure. 
Moreover, improvements in health care have led to longer life expectancies and lower infant mortality rates. According to the World Health Organization, Indonesia's life expectancy has increased from 67 years in 2000 to 72 years in 2020. Infant mortality rates have also declined from 35 deaths per 1,000 live births in 2000 to 20 deaths per 1,000 live births in 2020. While this is beneficial for the people of Indonesia, it has also exacerbated the population problems the country is facing, especially on the island of Java. In addition to economic and infrastructure factors, Java's cultural and social factors also play a significant role in attracting people to the island. Java has a rich cultural heritage and is known for its arts, music, and literature. The island is also home to several important religious sites, including Borobudur, one of the world's largest Buddhist temples. Java's people are known for their hospitality, warmth, and welcoming nature, which makes it an attractive destination for both tourists and people looking to relocate. The island's diverse communities and vibrant culture create a sense of community and belonging, which is important for people when choosing a place to live. While Java's high population has contributed to economic growth and development, it has also created a number of challenges. The island's population density of over 1,100 people per square kilometer is one of the highest in the world, leading to overcrowding and traffic congestion in urban areas. Migrants who come to the island often struggle to find adequate space to house themselves, and makeshift dwellings and slums are widespread in the island's cities. Moreover, the rapid pace of development has put pressure on the island's environment, leading to deforestation, soil erosion, and other forms of environmental degradation. The growing population on Java has also put a strain on the island's agriculture. With more people living on the island, the demand for food has increased, leading to a need for more land to be cleared for farming. This has resulted in deforestation and the destruction of natural habitats, leading to environmental issues such as soil erosion and loss of biodiversity. Moreover, as land is used for agriculture, the competition for resources such as water and fertilizer has also increased. This has led to issues of water scarcity and pollution, which can have a negative impact on both the environment and public health. Agricultural land has also been lost to urbanization due to the sheer number of people coming in, and farmers have been forced to adopt more intensive farming practices to meet the demand for food. According to the World Bank, the share of agriculture in Java's economy declined from 21% in 2000 to 14% in 2019. Another challenge of Java's high population is social inequality. While the island has experienced economic growth and development in recent years, this growth has not been evenly distributed across the population. As a result, some groups have struggled to access basic services such as healthcare and education. For example, in rural areas of Java, access to healthcare can be limited, with some villages lacking a doctor or hospital. This can lead to health disparities, with people in rural areas having higher rates of mortality than those in urban areas. Social inequality can also be seen in access to clean water and sanitation. According to the World Bank, only 47% of households in rural Java had access to improved sanitation facilities in 2019, compared to 78% of households in urban areas. Similarly, access to education can be limited in some parts of Java, particularly in rural areas. According to UNESCO, the net enrollment rate for primary education in Indonesia was 91% in 2019, but this figure masks regional disparities, with lower enrollment rates in some parts of Java. So what is being done to address these challenges? The Indonesian government has implemented a number of strategies aimed at managing population growth and promoting sustainable development. Family planning programs have been a key strategy for managing population growth in Java since the 1970s. The programs aim to provide education and resources to help families plan the number and spacing of their children. According to data from Indonesian Central Bureau of Statistics, the total fertility rate in Indonesia decreased from 5.6 in 1970 to 2.3 in 2020, in part due to these programs. However, the success of family planning programs in Java has been uneven at the very least. 
According to a study by the Population Council, some communities have been resistant to family planning due to cultural and religious beliefs, and access to family planning services can be limited in some rural areas. Another strategy for managing population growth in Java is urbanization. The government has encouraged the growth of urban areas as a way to provide better access to services and job opportunities, and to reduce the pressure on rural areas. The growth of urban areas as a way to provide better access to services and job opportunities, and to reduce the pressure on rural areas. While urbanization has provided some benefits, it has also led to challenges such as overcrowding, traffic congestion, and environmental degradation. For example, air pollution is a growing problem in Jakarta, with levels of particulate matter exceeding World Health Organization guidelines. In addition to family planning programs and urbanization, the Indonesian government has also implemented transmigration policies aimed at reducing the population of Java. Transmigration involves relocating people from densely populated areas to less populated areas in other parts of the country. It began as an initiative of the Dutch colonial government in the early 1900s and was later continued by the Indonesian government after independence. Post-independence, the transmigration program was implemented to alleviate poverty and overpopulation in Java and to promote development in other parts of the country. The program was first introduced in 1950, and by the mid-1990s, over 7 million people had been resettled through the program. While the transmigration program had some success in reducing population pressure in Java, it also had significant social and environmental impacts. For example, Many of the areas where trans migrants were resettled were already inhabited by indigenous communities, leading to conflicts over land and resources. Additionally, the development of new settlements has often led to deforestation and other environmental issues. In 2019, the Indonesian government announced their latest strategy, plans to relocate the capital city from Jakarta to East as a way to manage population growth in Java. The new city is planned to be built on a greenfield site, with a focus on sustainability and livability. While the relocation of the capital city is still in the planning stages, it has the potential to provide opportunities for economic growth and development outside of Java, and to reduce the pressure on Jakarta. However, there are also concerns about the environmental impact of building a new city especially since the island of Kalimantan has dense rainforests which will likely be cleared to accommodate the new city. How successful this new strategy plays out remains to be seen. So now you can see the various factors that have contributed to more than 60% of Indonesia's population living on the island. However, Java faces issues like environmental degradation, overcrowding, and social inequality on the island, which Indonesia's strategies to cope have not yet been able to solve. What do you think could be done? Do you have any other ideas of how Indonesia could solve the problems being caused by overpopulation on the island of Java? Let us know in the comments section down below. And if you enjoyed this video, smash that like button and subscribe to the channel so you never miss out on any other videos. Thanks for watching.